Welcome to jasonchats.com. This is going to be a quick, quick. I don't know what's going on with my mouth, but when I go like that, quick, I think Andre's about to fart again. Andre, whenever I go quick, I whistle. A bit like the uh, the pervert in Family Guy. Well, now, I don't mean to do it. It just seems to happen. So I don't know why. Anyway, this is going to be a quick one. See, did it again. Quick, 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 quick one. Um, I got up at eight o'clock this morning way too early and I went into town the bus was late so but it's okay I got into town and I went to this um, volunteers meeting thing now I thought it was just so I could see the or meet some people who were looking for volunteers. That's what I thought it was. I was going to go there, like a kind of like a job fair, like a volunteer fair, that kind of thing. And I knew that there was going to be a lady from the hospice there. So, you know, I was kind of up for going and, you know, seeing what is available and what I can do to help and stuff. So I get there and we're in this room and it's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, about eleven or twelve people, including the bloke that was speaking, who was running the group. It turns out it wasn't a volunteer fair. There wasn't various different people from different charities there, there was there was one person from the hospice, and it was it wasn't about her. It was about this course. It was actually a course that the volunteer bureau was running. They didn't tell me it was a course. It was a one day course, and they were holding it in order to raise money and get money from the government to show that people had turned up and I had to fill a form in. That was pretty much what it was about. It was about them uh, ticking boxes and getting funding, which is fine, but I felt it was under false pretenses that I was called there. It's like turning up for a prize, you know, you um, time share used to do this and they phone people up or they send a letter through the post to people and saying, come along, you've won a car and people go along and then they get told that they might have won a car but they might have won, they've won something but it might not be a car. And my lip is peeling. Anyway, I know this because I actually worked in timeshare for a short while and I was one of the salespeople trying to tell, trying to sell people timeshare. And one couple actually turned up and they came by train expecting to pick up their car and drive home in the car that they thought they'd won and they travelled from the other side of the country. So yeah. Anyway, this is what I felt like. I feel a little bit like I travelled from the other side of the country to pick up a car. But there was no car. I'm not my best at that time in the morning. Anyway, it was quite early. 
But when I sat down and I realised that they wanted me to fill forms in, I don't like filling forms in anyway. So I, I went along with it and I just did the minimum that I could do as far as filling the forms in. And the bloke that was running it kept talking over people and he was very impatient. So he said, everyone, we should all introduce yourselves. The first person starts talking and he starts introducing himself. And the, per and the bloke in charge, or whatever his, I don't know if he could go on his name, was hurrying him up. And now to the next person. And he said these fra this phrase at least three times. Let's try and keep it positive. Okay? Let's keep that in mind. Let's try and keep this positive. So the first person spoke said a bit about his life, a bit about why he was there. When he came to the second person, he said, right, let's uh, tell me why you're here in 30 seconds. Because the first person went on too long. And the second person probably spent maybe a minute and a half, two minutes talking. Then he asked her questions. Then he came to the third person. 30 seconds. I don't know if he even said 30 seconds, but she talked, not for long. Came to me. And he was rushing it, rushing it. Okay, yeah, yeah, next, next. So Jason, 30 seconds. What brought you here? I said, okay, right, so I'm gonna disc I'm gonna tell you my life story in 30 seconds and 30 seconds isn't enough that's enough time not even enough time to really describe a bowel movement never mind what life events brought me to uh, apply for a charity voluntary position there's more than just like a couple of words to say but anyway I started talking saying um, I haven't worked for four years due to mental illness and he said well, that's very brave of you to say that very brave of you it's not brave really is it it's just a bunch of words um, But I think he was also rushing, hurrying me on. Yeah, and, and the next thing, and then and uh, by the way, he had somebody who was actually monitoring him from outside the charity. So I don't know. They were sort of. I think he might have been a bit nervous. Anyway, I'm talking. I say, yeah, and I do. I'm a qualified counsellor. And I do hypnosis online, and then the door opened, and somebody walked in, like a new person that was late. And all the attention went to that person, and no, oh, excuse me, wait a second, to me, just like this, completely ignored me, and then moved on to the next person. Didn't even let me finish. Didn't even. And then again, there was one bloke, he said, I'm interested in counselling for people with cancer, because this was about the hospice. He said, because my uh, a family member died of cancer, uh, passed away of cancer. And the bloke in charge says, let's keep this positive, try and keep this positive. I really struggled to keep my mouth shut. Had it been a little bit later in the day, I would have been a bit more active, a bit more vocal, maybe. Not 
this time of day because now it's like two o'clock in the morning. But I couldn't believe this. Just telling, talking about somebody that you cared about and loved that died from cancer is not negativity. It's not you're not being negative, especially if you're in a setting of applying to volunteer with a hospice. So I waited till the break time came. They showed a couple of videos as well before that. And they were focusing on getting back to work. Volunteering is really good on your CV. It's really good for getting back to work. And pretty much hardly anybody in that room was there for that reason. There was some retired people. There was someone that was unable to work. A couple of people that were unable to work. really wasn't aimed at the audience, I don't think. It was just box ticking, I guess, to help them to fund. You know what I said to them when I walked into the building? I said, you know what? You might get some more passing, well, I didn't say this, but I'm going to pretend I did. You might get some more passing trade if you actually had the word volunteer in the sign in your window because there was a sign saying what they were but it didn't didn't even mention the word volunteer and I said how come you've not got the word volunteer on your sign so it's uh, anyway I left went to the toilet shat on the floor and no I didn't I didn't Uh, as I walked out, I just, I phoned up my friend to see if my friend was around because I came into town with him and I just, just walked, just, just walked away. I just couldn't, I've, I've got birds in the attic. Hear them like squeaking, up, like you know. That's that's a bird squeaking. Whatever bird sounds, whatever sounds birds make. I can't even talk. Anyway, I'm gonna go. That was my day. Um, what was strange though? is I felt really grumpy, proper grumpy. Hard done by, I felt sorry for myself. And I went with my friend to the hospital. And while I was waiting for him, got talking to a couple of elderly people and the bloke, the husband was quite funny, quite rude, so I was found it funny. He called me fat and yeah, fair enough. I only just met you and but <laughs> they seem to find it hilarious. But no, we were just like chatting. And so he went in and had his blood tests and um his wife was outside and just got her talking to her. He started talking about Ant from Ant and Dick. And she's been done for drink driving or whatever. And I was just saying that I can just imagine that the press are now going to hound him forever. You know, he's not going to give up. They're going to follow him every time he has a drink. They're going to hound him. And it seems like their purpose will be to hound him until he drinks too much. The way they tried, they hounded George Best and Paul Gascoigne and Amy Winehouse and you name it. There's numerous people 
that the press have hounded Michael Barrymore, where they just don't stop, they're relentless. Uh, newspapers just It's just amazing, it's just horrible. But, and she said to me, oh, there's no point, you know, it makes it wonderful, there's no even point being alive. And I thought, oh. And I had to stop and say, wait a minute, because I was just having a moan. We were just mo talking about end and death and I came over all caring, it's really weird, and started saying to her, no, no, and um, her son's very, very ill, and she's, you know, I guess going through, a, well, she is definitely going through a really, really, really difficult time, and I was just trying to, I felt myself, I found myself comforting her, just emotionally. When I left, I kind of gave her a little hug and said, see ya. And I felt quite good, but the kindness in me came out when I was not feeling very kind towards the world before that moment. And then on the way home, I got, I'm waiting for a bus, and there was this elderly lady, a couple started talking to me, a couple of elderly ladies, one particular one with a walking stick, she sat down in front of me, she got on the bus first, sat down, uh, I made sure she got to sit, sit down before the bus started, um, and then something fell on the floor, because she put her bags on the top of the of the bus, not on top of the bus. She didn't climb on the top of the bus because that'd be weird. Um, she she paraglided down from a big building. No, she didn't do any of that. No crocodiles in this story either. So so she just put her stuff on the side where you can put your bags and shopping and stuff. And something fell off I didn't know it was her but no one else on the bus they must have seen it because it made a clatter clatter noise made a noise no one else seemed to be bothered so I asked her so is that yours she said oh yeah it is and she went to get up said no just wait I'll, I'll get it for you and I put it into the bag that she told me to put it in and then something else fell out again I, I wasn't even taking notice but I saw it there on the floor. This time I didn't hear it, but again, there's people in front of me that could were closer to it. Didn't even think about helping, didn't, nothing. So I went over and said, is this yours as well? And I readjusted the bag so that they wouldn't fall out. The stuff wouldn't fall out anymore. And I hit her with some stinging nettles. No, I didn't, I didn't. And I just, I just don't understand why the other people weren't like helping not me I mean there wasn't heavy stuff to pick up it was only like little items but why was I the only one to notice that stuff was falling on the floor oh well so I felt I didn't feel proud of myself I didn't you know I didn't rush home and uh, dislocate my elbow so I could pat myself on the back. You know, nothing like that. Just, uh, just you know, so I'm closing my eyes just because I'm tired. You've got to remember that most of the time, over the last 12 years I've made videos, I've had my eyes closed because I've been doing hypnosis videos. So I kind of get into that mode of just like, oh, even though I'm talking and my brain's semi-working. 
Shamalina, Shamalina, Badabina, Babadina, Wada Wora, Wada Wora. Don't know what that was. Um, anyway, I'm going to go. You take care of yourselves. Today I have been working on my website. It's, I'm quite pleased with how it's going. Been adding some new bits and a few little design changes. Yeah, I've also got my three new websites, free relaxation hypnosis.com, free chronic pain hypnosis.com, free sleep hypnosis.com or something like that. They're all linked on a website. There's also yeah, there's a link on my jasonchats.com as well on the right hand side. As well as a link to my main website, jasonnewland.com. Blah blah blah. So yeah, I'm still working on everything. I think tomorrow I'm gonna start working on the podcasts and doing a bit of work on them and uh, trying to get a bit more organised. That's kind of the plan. But I'm not gonna be getting up early. I'm gonna have a nice lie in. I won't be going to bed for a couple of hours probably. Although I probably could go to bed now. Anyway, there we go. Take care of yourselves, and I shall see you next time. So this is Jason Newland, and this is JasonChats.com. Leave a message if you wanna. I'm gonna go. Remember to uh, treat yourself the way that you would like to be treated. And that might not make any sense to you, but think about it. And if it still doesn't make any sense to you, who gives a shit really? It doesn't matter, does it? Just, you know, probably it might even be pretentious of me to say it. I don't know. Don't care. See you later.